so much. <laughs> All right, I've got a couple of ideas today. One, now we talk about this being this big sort of house party like in the Shoba County Fair, except it's hobnob. Now, in Neshoba County, I get to wear blue jeans and a pullover. Some will say next year, let's go casual. I know, I know, we're here in the metro area, and we've got a lot of important businessmen and women here, and so we feel like we ought to wear these ties and things, and this is an important time. But look, it won't hurt us to put on some khakis. So we're going to change that a little bit next year. At least I'm going to make that recommendation. Didn't Tate Reeves do a good job? Y'all gave him a ham. You know, I'm always amazed sometimes what I read in the editorial page. I read the other day that Tate and I don't like each other. Did y'all see that? News to me. Don't worry, that's not the first editorial that's been wrong. It won't be the last. Tate and Ely are our dear friends. We look forward to serving with him. He's going to make a great lieutenant governor. My job as governor is going to be to make sure he's the best lieutenant governor this state's ever had. See, that's how I've worked with Governor Barber. You try to work together because this is not about power. You know, it's, I, I remember listening to people in the legislature and they'd say, my powerful chairman or the powerful members of our committee. And I would say, this is not about power. This is about service. You know, I teach uh, modern politics at Mississippi College and I tell my students the founding fathers inverted this system. You see, they turned it upside down. They made you the sovereigns and us the servants. That's why we're called public servants. And God's given me a great opportunity to serve this state, and I'm very honored by it. Now let's talk about education. When I saw Jim Barksdale outside, he said, we're going to talk about education. I said, I guess I better listen to you so we don't say the same thing. If we repeat it, that's okay. We're going to start very early. I thought about my educational plan beginning at the beginning. Now whose responsibility is it to teach children education at the earliest part of their lives? Parents, you got it. I heard it. Where'd we learn our ABCs from our parents? Yes, they'd make us stand up in front of our grandparents and say, watch Phil, he can do his ABCs. And then as we learned to actually do this thing that was so unique among other children in the neighborhood, we would learn to play. And if we wanted to act out our violence with those other children, what would our mother say? Don't hit. So you learn character. And then those of us that now have children in these modern times see them go on to daycare centers. And that's that early childhood education we're talking about. Look, I keep reading, we don't have an early childhood education program. We do. Have you ever heard of Head Start? Sure, they're doing remarkable things in Mississippi. How about Excel by Five? How about building blocks? How about all the parochial? How about all the daycare centers that we send our children to, like mine that went to Dominicare at St. Dominic's Hospital? Sure, they're learning there. And then we find out between kindergarten and fourth grade is when you've really got to learn how to read. If you don't have that reading down by the fourth grade, then you've got challenges the rest of the time. So if we know that, why don't we put our efforts there? Why don't we find our best teachers? Why don't we put our resources between that K and fourth grade so that the Barksdale Reading Institute can help us make sure those children can come out and read? And then we hear about, well, they're dropping out of school, sometimes 17 that 35% of our children are dropping out of school between the 9th and 12th grade. You know what happens to them? You and I support them. Now, some of them are able to escape that, but basically somehow you and I are supporting them the rest of their lives. So I've got a plan called dual enrollment. Now, you know, the really bright kids, the kids that make good grades, like mine, I had to take a moment to brag about it. No, 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 the kids, they get to go to dual enrollment. So you go to high school part of the time, and then you get to go to the community college. It works wonders. It saves you lots of money. Try it when your children get in high school. But see, we're missing those kids that are dropping out. So my idea is we take those children that are dropping out and put them in a dual enrollment in a community college to learn a skill. So rather than dropping out of school, they can learn how to weld, to be an electrician, a new IT system, a, a medical technician. We can save those children's lives by just dual enrolling them. We used to call it VOTEC. This is going to be a sort of 21st century VOTEC where those kids are going to come out of high school, out of high school with two things, ready to go to college or some type of skill they can go to work. That's going to be a dramatic thing, but we can do it in Mississippi. I'm going to try a pilot program where we redesign classrooms. Y'all seen classrooms, haven't you? Doesn't it look like the workplace? Have you ever seen a workplace where 25 desks are lined up and one guy standing at the head instructing the rest of them? No, no, no. 
What if we took some of these children, particularly in math and science, and we put them in cubicles like they'll be working in one day, and we put three of them in there with the updated technology, and they're able to work on problem solving in their math and science. And maybe we take two of the very best, and we put one that's having a little difficulty, and we say it's your job to help tutor them. And so we change the entire dynamic of that classroom to where it looks like the workplace. So from the very beginning of that early school, early childhood learning, we're working towards a child that can get a job. And then they get to college. You know, the, one of the largest uh, groups that we have now that are unemployed are children that come out of college and can't find a job. And what do they do? They move in with us. They move back home. And so we talked about the STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. If you have a degree in one of those areas, in one of those disciplines, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get a job. And as Governor Barber and I have worked so hard to turn this agrarian society into a high-tech job placement society where companies like Kior and Toyota, isn't that going to be great? Corolla's going to roll off Toyotas this month. It's November, isn't it? Oh, well, who's watching the calendar? Yeah, it's going to be so important to see that. And just the other day in Columbus, Mississippi, when I was in Keor, we're going to take pine trees and turn them into fuel oil. We're going to change every dynamic that we know of. We're going to build that. I propose that new medical city where our university medical center is at. We're going to graduate another 1,000 physicians by 2025. We've got so many wonderful things ahead of us. You see, every one of those physicians will carry $1.5 million into the community in which he goes. So that's the economy of health care. And then I hate to tell you, but if you look around the room, a lot of us are baby boomers. That means we're getting old. But you see, the baby boom generation has driven this economy since hula hoops. Every time we decide to buy something, it sells, whether it's convertible automobiles, houses, or now health care, and we're going to be ready for it in Mississippi. I see a bright and wonderful future ahead of us. Now, if we will work hard on our educational system, if we will tell parents, you have some responsibility with your child, and I'm going to say something that's going to shock you, so get ready. It is not good for 15-year-old girls to have children. I know I'm not supposed to say that. Audiences often say, thank you very much. Come on now. I get a lot of winces out of that, but it's just simply not good for that to happen. So we're going to have to go in our communities and say it's not going to work anymore. We're not going to let particularly adult males to have children by other children. You see, if that happens in Rankin County, we're going to t catch that sexual predator, and we're going to put him in jail. Other parts of this state, it can happen like Sunflower County sometimes, like where I was born, and people shrug their shoulders. We can do better than this, but it's going to have to start with all of us. You see, 40 years ago, you say, half the people in this room would probably be smoking. There'd be ashtrays sitting around. You might be walking outside having a cigarette. And then all of a sudden, society said, we're not going to accept that anymore. We don't like it. It's harming you. I don't want to inhale it. We just wish you wouldn't do that. And so we're going to have to look at that with some problems like teen pregnancy. And we're just going to have to say as a society and churches and communities and all over, that's not going to happen anymore in Mississippi. We're going to be able to change that complete dynamic. There's so many wonderful things we're going to look at. A couple of things we can't do. We can't raise corporate income taxes. Now let me tell you, last year we had a little press conference and there was a lot of people in the legislature that said we're not paying enough corporate income taxes. You want to drive corporations away, you just do that. We're going to develop a commission when I'm governor that's going to look at every regulatory agency in the state. And if that regulation is hurting businesses, we're going to see if we can't do something about it. We're going to have a great day ahead of us. I want to thank you for having me. Now, I'm just in front of Governor Barber. This will be his last opportunity, Governor, to speak to Hobbs. Well, as governor, it'll be his last opportunity. But I can tell you what a wonderful four years this has been. I, I often joke and say it's like being an assistant coach to Bear Bryant. If you'll just pay attention, if you'll watch and learn and listen and see the dedication and the passion of this man that he has for the people of the state of Mississippi, I'm going to carry that passion into this office. Now, they say, aren't you intimidated? Don't you worry about the gov following Haley Barber? Oh, no, because I know he's not going anywhere, and I'm going to call on him. and I'm going to ask him for help every chance we have. Because we're going to move Mississippi forward. And I'm going to need all of your help to do it. Thank you for giving me these 10 minutes. God bless you.